What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. And moving on to another example, dealing with the inverse of a function. So we're told if f of x is equal to negative 2x plus 5, we have to determine each of these expressions here. Notice we have four expressions. So part A, pretty simple, f of 3, we would just plug in 3 for the x values in the function. So f of 3 would be negative 2 times 3 plus 5 which would give us what? Negative 6 plus 5, which would give us negative 1. So that's the answer for part A, pretty simple. Now part B, it's asking us for f of negative 1, 3. Now remember, this is the inverse here. So there's actually two ways to do this. So the first way is we can come up with an expression for the inverse. So we have y equals negative 2x plus 5. And how do we come up with an expression for the inverse algebraically? We interchange the x and y values. So we'll have x equals negative 2y plus 5. And then we isolate for that y value. And I think the easiest way to do that, I'm going to bring the negative 2y over, make it positive 2y, and then I'm going to bring the x over and make it negative x. So we'll have 5 minus x. We could have also brought the 5 over and had x minus 5 and then divided by negative 2, but I don't feel like dividing by a negative number. I'd rather divide by a positive number. So brought the x over, brought the negative 2y over, and so divide both sides by 2 to get the y by itself. So y equals 5 minus x over 2, which means that the inverse is 5 minus x over 2. So now that we have this expression for the inverse, we could figure out what this is. This would basically be, we would plug in this into this x value. So we'd have 5 minus 3 over 2, which would give us 2 over 2, which would give us 1. Now, another way that uh, we can do this, okay, so if we have a function and then we have its inverse. Notice that we were plugging in an x value of 3 into the inverse. And then we ended up, or we were solving for that y value. Well, remember the inverse and the function, the way they relate uh, is just the x values and y values are interchanged. So what we can do is we could just interchange these so if we were using the function, basically the y value would equal 3 and we'd be solving for the x value. Okay, does that make sense? So this is telling us the x value in the inverse is 3. That's the same as the function having a y value of 3. And we could just solve for the x value. So if we brought the function back, negative 2x plus 5, and we let the y value equal 3, we could solve for this x value, we'd have negative 2x equals 3 minus 5, bring the 5 over, so we'd have negative 2, divide both sides by negative 2 to get the x by itself, we'd end up with positive 1, which is the y value of the inverse. Personally, unless the function is really complex, I usually like to get an expression first and then plug it in. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. But uh, this method is really useful. We'll see this in future examples where we don't have to necessarily get an expression. All we have to do is plug this value into the y value of the function and then solve for x. Right? But either way, the answer to part b is uh, 1. And then uh, part c, we have a uh, more complex expression. So we have f of 6 minus f of 2 in the numerator. So for this, we would plug in 6 into the function for the x value. So negative 2 times 6 is negative 12 plus 5 gives us negative 7. And then uh, we'll have minus, if we plug in 2 for the x value, we'll have negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4, plus 5, which is 1. So we'll be subtracting 1. And then 6 minus 2, that's just 4. Notice that these are just integers. So we'll have negative 8 over 4, which would give us negative 2. So that is the answer for.
part C. And then moving on to part D, we have f of 6 minus f of negative 1, 3, all over f of 4 minus f of negative 1, negative 11. Now, this here was written as positive 11 before, but if you did that, you would actually get 0 in the denominator, which would make it undefined. I meant to write negative 11 here. So this got changed, just as a heads up. So f of 6, we already know it's negative 7. f of negative 1, 3, we already know it's 1. So this would be minus 1. Now f of 4, we would plug in 4 for the x value of the function. So negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, plus 5 gives us negative 3. And then f of negative 1 of negative 11, um, what was the expression for the inverse? It was um, 5 minus x over 2. I erased it by accident. So if I plug in negative 11 here for this x value, we'll have 5 minus negative 11 over 2. So those turn into a positive, those two negatives. So 5 plus 11 is 16 over 2 gives us 8. So this would be 8. And so notice that we would end up having negative 8 over negative 11. The negatives can cancel out. So the answer is just 8 over 11. So we've got negative 1, positive 1, negative 2, 8 over 11.